up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i'm go pony and today we are in the new 2020 mazda 3 courtesy of jack g and volvo mazda in york pa i'm super excited to be at this one right now first thing i noticed these seats are bolstered beautifully certainly holding me tight in place i have a feeling this is going to be a fun one another reason i wanted to check this one out though is consumer reports to give it an above average reliability rating which is always a good thing little peace of mind there and there are actually some changes for the 2020 model year so what do you say let's go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as expected there will be several different trim levels for the 2020 Mazda 3 first one being the base sedan starting at $21,500 and by the way that is a $500 increase over the 2019 model year then you have the select sedan starting at $22,700 preferred sedan starting at $24,200 and premium sedan starting at $26,500 and so I broke those prices down of course with them being the sedan variant there is actually a hatchback version of the Mazda the three as well if you wanted the hatchback version of the base trim at twenty one hundred dollars if you wanted the hatch of the preferred or premium trims at one thousand dollars and if you wanted all-wheel drive configured up to either the select sedan preferred or the premium because those are the three trims you can get all-wheel drive with you can't get them with the base unfortunately but simply add one thousand four hundred dollars to any of those prices and that's really a big selling point with the mazda 3 right now because other cars in its class like the toyota corolla like the Honda Civic they don't give you all-wheel drive so if you live in PA like I do and we get snow quite often this is the one you're gonna want to be in <laughs> but anyways nonetheless when it comes to the power plant regardless of trim level the power plant is going to be the same powering this one is a 2.5 liter direct injected inline four-cylinder putting out 186 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 186 pound-feet of torque available at 4,000 rpm power sent to front wheels or all wheels through a six-speed automatic with paddle shifters on the premium trims only so we do not have them today unfortunately but you can get them with the premium trim if you wanted them six speed manual I know somebody's gonna ask is available for the premium hatchback trim only that is the only way you can get a six speed now in the Mazda 3 is the premium hatch but zero to 60 time comes in at approximately seven seconds flat according to the motor trend for comparison's sake Honda Civic comes in at 6.8 seconds Redline comes in at 6500 rpm if you really wanted to push this one and then PG numbers are going to sit at 26 in the city, 35 highway for the front wheel drive, 24 city, 32 highway for the all wheel drive. And for comparison's sake, although this isn't really a comparison video, Civic Sedan comes in at 32 in the city, 42 on the highway. But then again, Civic Sedan doesn't give you all wheel drive. And either setup that you go with, whether it be front wheel drive or all wheel drive, this one is going to take regular unleaded fuel, aka 87 octane. But so now before we do any kind of acceleration in the 2020 Mazda 3, I did want to mention there is a sport driving mode. That button is located just to the left of the shifter. When you press that, it did immediately just downshift for me. So it is going to hold the RPMs at a much higher level, giving you more power on demand. It is also going to adjust throttle sensitivity as well. And so but now having done that, I think you guys know what time it is. Since we don't have the paddle shifters to test out, let's just go ahead and jump right into the acceleration. And let's see how quickly we can get this new 2020 Mazda three here up to speed you guys ready there we go grip son <laughs> yeah definitely no issues in merging onto the highway and i purposefully picked the all-wheel drive setup today because i wanted to test something out in particular when you hit the gas like that in the front wheel drive setup typically you will get some slippage you'll get some spinning of the front wheels but with all-wheel drive power is sent to the ground instantly so there was no slippage there whatsoever i love having all-wheel drive vehicles definitely gives you a ton of peace of mind whether it be acceleration or driving in the snow or the rain or whatever so gotta say i'm definitely a big fan of that but so anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important and so braking setup is actually going to differ slightly depending on if you go with the front wheel drive or the all-wheel drive setup front wheel drive is going to give you 11.02 inch ventilated front discs if you go with the all-wheel drive you're going to get 11.61 inch ventilated front disc so slightly larger rotors in the front if you go with that all-wheel drive configuration at least in the back it's going to be the same either way 10.43 inch solid rear discs as far as the braking feel goes let's do a quick little brake check 
love it <laughs> definitely no issues of bringing this one to a stop so wonderful braking feel no squishiness or brake pedal delay or anything like that so that's always a good thing touching on suspension and handling a little bit up front you're going to get an independent mcpherson strut front suspension in the back torsen beam rear axle as far as the steering feel goes as always through all mazdas through every car in its lineup steering feel is absolutely wonderful definitely points you in the direction that you want to go very easily this car is going to be a ton and is a ton of fun to drive on these back roads here in the mountains in Pennsylvania so I love that as far as ride quality goes it's actually been perfectly fine it's pretty much as expected for a compact car so no issues there for me either cabin noise is pretty much as expected not as quiet as a luxury car but certainly not loud or punishing either it's pretty much just fine so no issues there touching on visibility with this sedan I will see the visibility is definitely on point I can see beautifully right out the back of this one and I will say I did review the hatchback I believe it was last year and that one visibility wasn't quite as good as the sedan that I'm currently driving right now so I did want to mention that but either way you shouldn't have any issues honestly but rain sensing windshield wipers will also come standard across the board that should assist of course with visibility as well you will also get a head-up display with the premium trim so that's pretty cool it's going to display your speed on the windshield so it can better help keep your eyes on the road better help enjoy the drive a little bit in this Mazda 3 so that is always a good thing as well and that about rounds out the performance segment of this review let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this jet black mica beautiful and black 2020 Mazda 3 all right you guys here she is the 2020 Mazda 3 let's go ahead and start up front on this one LED headlights are actually going to come standard on all trim levels I always love that LEDs are standard definitely going to better illuminate your drive at night comparatively speaking to the halogens that come standard on most compact cars out there so that's a plus automatic feature is also going to come standard with that meaning when it starts to get dark out at night those headlights will turn on automatically for you there so you don't have to worry about that LED daytime running lights also standard and I did want to mention up front the sedan is going to differ of course slightly comparatively speaking to the hatchback the sedan is going to give you a chrome surrounding on that front grille whereas the hatchback is going to give you a matte black surrounding on that front grille so quite a substantial difference there I guess the hatchback being a slightly more sportier appearance whereas the uh, the sedan might be a little more elegant of an appearance but still very very menacing in this jet black mica exterior that we have today but nonetheless let's go ahead and make our way to the side on this one and so to tie together with the front on the sides chrome window surrounds will come standard with the sedan black window surrounds with the hatchback although that hatchback will come with chrome belt line molding a little bit of chrome on that one taking a look at the side mirror they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors for all trim levels including integrated turd signals actually as well then take a look down at the wheel setup 16 inch aluminum alloy wheels will come with the base sedan however all other trim levels for both the sedan and the hatchback will give you 18 inch aluminum alloy wheels and that of course is what you are looking at right now but now making our way to the back led taillights actually standard across the board and they actually have a nice smoked housings to them i can see as well and that looks absolutely wonderful on our black exterior i love when they include smoked housings on taillights it just looks so much better this thing looks awesome in the back i gotta admit but anyways did want to mention signature led taillights coming with the premium trims that gives it a little more of a 3d effect it's kind of a cool look to it rear spoiler with an integrated brake light will come with the hatchback of course not the sedan rear window wiper coming with that hatchback as well just below it all whether you go with the sedan or the hatch you will find dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips so i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip So, but now since we are round back to go ahead and open that rear trunk there actually is a button on the key fob is probably the simplest way there's also a button by the driver's side left knee and there is a button on the actual trunk itself as well a few different ways to go about opening it but once opened up cargo capacity comes in at 13.2 cubic feet for the sedan for the hatchback however it will come in at 20.1 cubic feet and for comparison's sake civic sedan kind of smashes right in the middle there at 15.1 cubic feet but if you did need additional space though there is a 60 40 split meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space there if you needed it and of course you have some cargo lighting back there as well 
Then make our way to the rear legroom. That comes in at 35.1 inches. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. And you can find a rear center armrest with cup holders if you go with the select sedan end up. That is how you're gonna get that. Once again, seating is just as comfortable as in the front seats. And by the way, making our way to the front seats on the 2020 Mazda 3, cloth seating will come standard with the base sedan, of course, leatherette seating with the base hatchback, the preferred hatchback, and the select and preferred sedan, so leatherette pretty much and everything, but the premium trims. Premium trim levels are gonna give you full leather seating, but preferred trim level is also going to add in addition to that, power adjustable driver seat with power lumbar, two position memory seating and heated front seats as well. They take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for the select sedan and up. That is of course what you're looking at right now. And also all trims for the hatchback. It is gonna come leather wrapped with that as well. Then when it comes to the startup, let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have the new style key for 2020. You have the Mazda logo on the one side and nothing on the other side because all of the buttons are located on the side of the key because of course it is all keyless entry. So technically you don't even have to take the key out of your pocket. So simply walk up to the vehicle, put your foot on the brake and there is a push button start just by the driver's right knee, which comes standard by the way for all trim levels. So all I'm going to do is simply just put my foot on the brake and press that button there. Once started up, tachometer is on your left, fuel information is all the way to the right, and there is a digital display for the speedometer front and center, and that looks pretty cool actually. But of course, it's just gonna have your basic information, outside temperature, miles per gallon, how many miles you have left until you hit empty trip information, just stuff like that basically. Taking a look at overall interior quality, a power moonroof is gonna come with a premium trim levels only, and that is why we don't have one today. Dual zone climate control coming standard with all trims on the hatchback and the select sedan trim level and up. So that is currently what you're looking at right now. And there's actually a lot I like about the Mazda 3 and a lot of it is very similar to the CX-30 I recently reviewed actually as well. For instance, you have this Audi-esque style climate control just above the passenger side glove box where it kind of looks like it's all one fluid climate control vent. So that's pretty cool. Just above that, you have some nice dark stitching to go with the black leather. And I do like that it's black leather with a black exterior that is really the way to go. Also like the silver door handle incorporated into that silver line in the doors. It definitely looks good as well. When it comes to some of the basics up front, you're going to find a USB charging port and I'll tell you what that's for later. Little cargo area tray there. There's a couple cup holders with the cup holders located in front of the shifter and that's definitely a plus for me because a lot of the times vehicles will put it behind the shifter and then when you go to shift into drive or reverse, you kind of have to maneuver around your cups or your energy drinks or whatever to try to shift into gear. So it's definitely a better option that they put it in front of the shifter rather than behind. Also have an electromechanical parking brake with the auto hold button. This center armrest can actually slide forward and backward as well. So help you get a little more comfortable on long road trips perhaps. But once you actually up and up that center console, there is yet another USB charging port as well as a 12 volt power outlet used to charge up batteries so I can film this video. So definitely a decent amount of space for what the car is. It is a compact car, but nonetheless, Let's now go ahead and take a look at the tech display, one of the best parts about the Mazda 3 because 8.8 inch display screen will come standard for all trim levels. It is not a touch screen display. To actually control what is on that screen, there is a circular dial and buttons directly behind the shifter here. But I will say it is an extremely easy system to use. And quite honestly, that is a heck of a far reach anyway. So I probably wouldn't even want it to be a touch screen, but that is an insanely large screen for all trim levels across the board. Other compact cars will give you a seven inch display screen typically or less six inch display screen, even five inch, but 8.8 inches really above and beyond for its segment. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard with that. Android Auto Apple CarPlay will come for all trim levels with a hatch and the select sedan and up. So the base sedan will not get the Android Auto Apple CarPlay, but you can also, of course, check out your radio settings up there. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system, you will get eight speakers with the base and select sedan trim levels, and you will get a 12 speaker Bose sound system with the preferred trim level and up. And so having recently just reviewed the CX-30 with the Bose sound system, this is a perfect comparison right now because now I have the eight speaker sound system. And of course the Bose kills it, but Let's go ahead and see what we got playing on the radio today and let's test out this eight speaker sound system that we have in our Mazda 3 here today. <laughs> I 
still don't get why they have dogs barking at the beginning of that song, but still, sound system is all right. It's pretty much as expected. Having just reviewed a car with the 12-speaker Bose system, it's nowhere even close to that, quite honestly. So, of course, I'll go for the Bose sound system any day of the week, but that should be fine, especially at the price point this thing is at, and all-wheel drive, so... It's pretty much as expected for an eight-speaker sound system there. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the tech display, at least, is when you do put the Mazda 3 in reverse, you will get a rear view camera for all trim levels across the board, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, I first did want to mention the Mazda 3 is an IIHS top safety pick, which is a heck of a start already. And so at the beginning of the video, I mentioned there was some new changes for the 2020 Mazda 3. This is where they really come in when it comes to safety. All all trim levels are now going to come standard with eye active sense safety features which is what Mazda calls their safety package essentially that does indeed come standard including lane departure warning lane keep assist adaptive cruise control with stop and go driver attention alert and high beam control and so in addition to that if you went with the hatchback or the select sedan and up you will also get a blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert and of course you get the basics like front side side curtain airbags is actually driver and passenger knee airbags bags as well. It's something that doesn't usually come standard on vehicles out there. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks back there, and a tire pressure monitoring system. I'd so, but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there. If you like, feel free to pick up some merch just below the video. If you want to support the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know when I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.